What's up everybody, it's your man Harris here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install a LAMP stack on your Windows 11 computer. We're going to be using WSL to do this. So first, you're going to go ahead and open up a terminal. So go inside of your search bar and type in terminal, and make sure you right click it and click run as administrator. This is a requirement to properly install it. So once you're in your terminal, type in the command WSL dash dash install. Just like I did here. So WSL space dash dash install. And this will install Ubuntu Linux onto your Windows 11 computer. So this shouldn't take very long. Now, if this is your first time ever installing WSL, it will ask you to restart your computer. So go ahead and restart your computer once it's finished and come back to this point in the video. Now, once your computer restarts, this terminal will pop up automatically for you and it will ask you to enter a new Unix username. So this will be your username for your Ubuntu system. So go ahead and type in whatever username you want and then it will ask you to type in your password. So go ahead and type in the password for yourself. Now, once you've done both of those things, it will finish the installation. As you can see, it says installation successful, and it has booted me into my Ubuntu system. So right now, inside of the terminal, I'm logged in to my Ubuntu system. As you can see, my username Harris is here at my PC name. So I'm inside of Ubuntu right now. So first, we want to go ahead and update our repositories. So we're going to do sudo space apt-git and then update. And it will ask you for the password that you just set for your Linux system. So go ahead and type in that password that you just set. And this will go ahead and install or update our repositories. So we have all of the latest packages. So now we've installed the first part of our LAMP stack, our Linux system. So next, we're going to install Apache. So we're going to do sudo space apt dash git install Apache 2. So, and then it'll ask you to, if you want to continue, so just type in Y and then click enter for yes. And this should be a quick install. So this will install our Apache server. So now that's done. So now we have to install MySQL. So go on your Windows computer, onto your web browser, and just go on Google and type in MySQL. And it will be the mysql.com link. Once you're on the website, just go to downloads up here in the menu. And once you're on downloads, scroll all the way down, and it'll be this link here, MySQL Community GPL Downloads. So you do need to install the community version if you would like everything to be free. So we're going to go ahead and select this MySQL APT repository. So make sure you're in the APT repository. So once you're there, go ahead and download this package. Click download, and then you can just click no thanks, just start my download. And it will download the configuration file for you. So now go ahead and open your file explorer and go into your downloads folder and the configuration file will be there. So go ahead and copy it. So right click, copy. And on the left hand side of the file explorer, if you look all the way at the bottom where your this PC and network are, so this PC and network, you will see a Linux folder. So click the Linux folder and this will take you into your Linux system. So you can go into your Linux system through Windows by doing it through the file explorer. So go ahead and click on Ubuntu and home, and then your username. So mine is Harris. And go ahead and paste that MySQL configuration file right here. Once you've done that, go back into your terminal where you're logged in to Ubuntu. So now we want to just type in ls, enter, and we will see our MySQL configuration file here. It will be this .deb file. So go ahead and type in sudo dpkg space dash i, and then 
go ahead and copy this or type it out. It's much easier to copy it. And go ahead and control C and then right click or control V. And that will paste it in and go ahead and click enter. Now it will ask you to select your configuration. I always just leave everything as it is. So you just scroll down with your arrow keys to OK. You won't be able to use your mouse, so you do have to use your, your keyboard only. So scroll down to OK and click OK. And that will set up the configuration. So now that the configuration is set up, we need to update our repositories again. So sudo apt dash git update. And this will pull the latest version of MySQL for us. So now that we've got our repositories updated, we need to install MySQL Server. So we're gonna run this command. Now, I do have this file here with all of these more difficult commands, I guess, linked in the description. So if you follow the link, you can download this file so you don't have to type these out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the first one. So this will install MySQL Server for us. So this is sudo apt-git install MySQL Server. And it will ask us if we want to continue. So just type in a Y for yes and click enter. And it will then ask us to set our root password for MySQL. So go ahead and come up with a password that you want for your root user. And retype it again. So you do have to click enter. Again, you can't use your mouse. And once you've typed in your password, it will ask you what kind of encryption for your password you want to use. I always just use strong password encryption. So I keep it default. And that will install MySQL Server for us. Now, once that's done installing, we want to run the second command, sudo MySQL secure installation to basically secure our install. So this does some some security fixes for us so that we don't have any vulnerab vulnerabilities with our MySQL server. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command, sudo MySQL secure installation, and it will ask us for the root password for MySQL. So this will be the MySQL password that you just set when you installed MySQL. And the first question will be if you want to use the validate password component, I always do yes, so Y for yes, and click enter. It will ask us what level of validation you wanna use. I always just use one for medium. Then it will ask you if you want to change the password for root. It'll show you the estimated strength of your current password. So since mine is 100, I'm gonna do N for no. And it, then it will ask us if we want to remove anonymous users. I always do yes. Disable root login remotely, yes. Remove test database and access to it, yes. Reload privilege tables now, yes. So that will have installed our MySQL server. So we're all set with that. Now finally, we just need to install PHP. So we're going to run this long script here that will install PHP and a bunch of extensions that we need to have installed to properly use MySQL on the server side to interact with, or I'm sorry, the extensions we need to use PHP on our server side to properly interact with MySQL. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this long command. Again, the link to the file is in the description if you just wanna copy and paste these. So I'm gonna go ahead and install PHP. Ready? So this should be pretty quick. Um, all right, so all of that's installed. And then finally, we just wanna run this final command here. So this command is going to give us permission on our server in Linux so that we can copy and paste files from our Windows computer using the file explorer to our Linux system. So we don't have to use the command prompt anytime we want to update files inside of our server. So we're gonna do sudo chown, so sudo chown dash capital R for recursive and then it's gonna be backslash var backslash www and then click enter. Oh, okay, I forgot to put in my username. So it's sudo chown 
and then your user or chown dash r and your username. So it's going to be this command right here. So sudo chown the dash capital R your username. So whatever username you set. So it'll be this one here on the left of, of your command prompt. So your username and then the directory var www. And that will give us permission to copy and paste from Windows into this directory. So let's take a quick look at that. So open up your file explorer. And if you look on the left hand side, again, you have your Linux system, which you can access through your file explorer. So if you go into Ubuntu, and you go down to the var directory, var, and then you go into the www directory, you will have your HTML directory. So this is where all the files inside of your server will go. So if we go into HTML, we can see that our index.html file is in here. So that is just the default index.html file. So if we go on our web browser and we open up a new tab and we just type in localhost, it will take us to our server. So this page that we get here is just this index.html file here in the www HTML directory. So in HTML. So we ran that sudo chown command to give our user ownership over this www directory. So anything inside of this. So now we can copy and paste from Windows into this directory. So to run your server, all you have to do is just type in localhost inside of your web browser. Now you do have to have your Ubuntu open. So just all you have to do is just in your search bar, just type in Ubuntu and open it up. And once you have the terminal opened up, then you can go into your web browser and type in localhost and you will get your web page. So to put your website onto the server, all you have to do is just take the existing index.html and all of your files for your website and put them into this HTML folder. So once you've uploaded your website into the HTML folder, all you have to do is open up the Ubuntu again inside of the search bar. It'll be the Ubuntu app. And once that's open, then you just go into your web browser and type in localhost and your website will be here. And then you can basically edit your website in this folder, the www HTML folder inside of your Ubuntu system. So that's an easy way to set up a LAMP stack in Windows 11, and it gives you full customizability. Plus, you get the benefit of having a fully Linux based LAMP stack. So you have a server that's running on Linux, which will most likely be what you have running if you have a production level website. So you get the you get all the benefits of having Linux on and Windows 11. Anyway, that's how you install a LAMP stack on Windows 11. Make sure you guys check out our sponsor for this video, invoicebell.app, where you can create a free account and create invoices, estimates, and quotes. It comes with unlimited storage and has multi-language support. It supports English, Spanish, and Bosnian. So you can use it in any language, in any one of those three languages that you want. It's very easy to use, so make sure you guys check that out at invoicebell.app. Thank you so much for watching this video, and have a great night.